Today we are going to be building, ladies and gentlemen, a, I think this is like a twelve to $1,300 ITX gaming PC. A lot of these are like sponsored parts, so like the motherboard is super expensive. Like, you could definitely get this price to performance for much cheaper, especially if you don't go I down the ITX route. But the case we're using is the Fantex Eclipse P200A. And this actually just released, like, what was it, like a month ago or so? Fantech sent this out. I was supposed to make this video a little bit sooner, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, this reminds me, this is very much like an NZXT H210 case. Is that, am I saying that right? 210? Wow, I haven't talked about that for a while. Uh, where it's definitely on the bigger side of things for the ITX cases. Uh, I've built in that ITX case from Cooler Master than our 200P, which is like half the size of this. So this is definitely a big boy. It actually fits a full size power supply on here, but uh, yeah, it's still ITX nonetheless. So that's what we're going with. That's the Fantex Eclipse P200A. What else do we have here? Team Group is also hooking us up today with this build with both the T Force 16 gigabytes of RAM kit. This is gray color, and then also their new Cartier Zero Z330. Gen 3 NVMe SSD drive, 512 gigabytes. So we have both of those parts here for the motherboard. This is the most ex second most expensive part in this build. This is the Gigabyte Aorus Z590 Ultra ITX form factor. I actually bought this used on Amazon Warehouse. I'm not drunk, you're drunk. Uh, I actually bought this used on Amazon Warehouse. So I saved a little bit of money, but it was still obnoxiously expensive for the cpu now this definitely requires some asterisks here this is an i5 11 400 now you definitely could have gone with an 11 400 f if you're spending this kind of money you probably should have bought a better i5 than the 11 400 however this build that i'm building for is actually not going to be a dedicated gaming pc build guide on the youtube channel i'm using this as a Intel integrated graphics GPU video. So I'm just using all of these parts as an excuse to use an 11400. I wanted to I wanted to use an 11400 specifically for that video to test the integrated graphics of a somewhat budget Intel CPU with an iGPU. So this 11400 was very specific to what I need, not necessarily the most optimized price to performance option here. And I just threw it down there so Hopefully it didn't break. For the graphics card, I am going to be putting a graphics card in this PC because I'm eventually just going to be selling it. For the YouTube video, I'm just going to be uh, removing it so we use the iGPU. However, the graphics card is an EVGA RTX 2070 Super. And this I picked up on EVGA B-Stock recently, actually, for $465. So definitely not the best deal out there, but I'll take any GPU at this point. So 2070 Super, we got there on deck. The power, or yeah, the power supply Corsair hooked us up with. This is the CX650F RGB. Super excited about this one because our case came with two RGB fans here up at the front, and there's not a lot of room for anything else. Like I didn't want to put just like a single RGB fan in the back that's from a different manufacturer, and then I have to use like a different hub or whatever. So I figured let's just use an RGB power supply up here because we have to put the power supply there. And then that's enough RGB for this build. So that's why I wanted that one specifically. The it's all good. Uh, this costs like a hundred dollars. I think now definitely more expensive than what it used to be, but uh, yeah, pretty excited to see how this will turn out. Uh, Fantex also, they didn't tell me they were sending this, but they sent the Glacier 1240. I don't have an, uh, an obligation to use this. I'm going to put this up at the front behind the RGB fans because I don't really think we ha I have another option in that build. And screw it. We might, like, you don't need this 240 AIO for an 11400. That's why I was saying the 11400 is not the most optimized option for a, a pretty baller PC like this, but we have what we have and I needed that 11400 for something specifically. So that's why we're using that AIO. And then for our last two parks parts, we have my favorite parts of any gaming PC build guide. And that is the carbon fiber vinyl and some formula mod cable extensions. Both of these are gray, uh, pretty similar in color. The, the extensions are a little bit darker. However, 
this kind of shows off what the color scheme of this build is going to be, which is going to be black and, like, this gunmetal gray. And then, like, the RGB. I don't know what color I'm going to go with the RGB colors. Let me know what you guys think. But I was honestly thinking something like this. Here, hold on. Let me switch cameras. Let me know what you guys think. I was thinking about making it like this. Like, imagine, like, all black, all gray, and then, like, there's just, like, purple and blue color scheme what do you guys think that's i was thinking about going with this color scheme i think that would look pretty cool we can do whatever we want obviously but yeah what do you guys think about that paired with everything else honestly you can't go wrong with up here fans dude i dude i, I feel you i'm gonna go get some up here fans see this is this is how i operate here man we we got extra parts for days we got a brand new five pack of up here rgb fans at any one time. There's probably 30 other up here fans back there. Let us begin. First up, we have our motherboard. Like I said earlier. This is the Gigabyte Aorus Z590i. Aorus Ultra. LGA 1200. ITX form factor. And boy, is it looking beautiful. And it actually fits our color scheme perfectly. This is the color scheme right here that I'm going for. Black and like the gunmetal gray. That's it right there. Ooh, pretty tiny. All right, what else do we have in here? We got some SATA datas. We have our PWM fan extension things, which we will need. Uh, we'll just leave all of this out. I don't know what all we're going to need right now. Okay, here we go. All right, we got that. Let's get our CPU installed first. All right, there we go. Let's get rid of our stock intel processor however i do want my sticker man i gotta stop forgetting to do this i always forget we gotta take the sticker we gotta put it on our we gotta put it on our screw box man like my my screw box sticker bomb is looking weak i look like a beginner pc builder there's only like 10 cpus on here man i gotta step up my game but for now i'm gonna try try to do my best here and install this CPU while you guys figure that stuff out. Okay. We got our 11400. Gonna try to... Painful! I'm trying to install something, man. Drop that into the socket there. We got our corner, gold corner down here. Pop that off and bam. Our 11400 is installed. Alright, where's our RAM? Once again, this RAM was provided to us by T-Force. I'm glad I finally have a contact with them because they were also pretty much like, hey, ma'am, whatever you, whatever you want, you let us know. And I just gave them a list of a couple RAM kits, a couple SSDs and whatnot, and they sent it right over. So always nice working with companies that do that. So we are going to install this in our only two slots just like that and this is also going to hopefully show our color scheme what i'm going for the black and gunmetal it's looking pretty good so far and then after that we have our ssd which i think this is brand new this is the t-force cardia zero z330 i don't think this has been on the market for too long okay Can, is this a peel i can't tell if these are peels i don't think they are no, I think it's just scratched up. Yeah, no peel. Okay, does our SSD go in the back? Should I put the SSD under here? I guess I probably should, huh? How do I remove this thing? We'll do our best. We'll just see what happens. Zach, I'm picking up an AIO tomorrow. The M oh, you're getting the MSI one for 70 bucks? Nice, man. I think those, I think you were saying those originally go for like $100? Sounds like you got a good deal. Okay, so we have that removed. Now what do we do? Does this whole thing come up? Unscrew these. This is a very elaborate setup here. I'm very confused. Okay, remove that. Okay. Oh, wow, there wasn't even plastic on, on this. On the heat pad, which I don't think is that big of a deal, but whatever. Okay. So we will install the SSD like so. Okay. 
put this back over top of it like that. That doesn't look right. That doesn't look right at all. Unless if we need, are we going to need a different screw for this now? Oh, never mind. I think I see. I think I see. Oh boy. Okay. We'll put this in first. And then we will screw down just the SSD. Make sure that's nice and secure in there. And then we can secure that down. There we go. And then we can just simply put this on top like that. And that'll be fine like that. And then we put this up at the top and line these screws. I think that'll work. This socket of this motherboard, which I did buy used, has a little bit of thermal paste on it still. So let's try to clean that up. That's obnoxious. Come on, Amazon. What are you guys thinking here? That's ridiculous. That's what you get when you buy used, though. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with this motherboard. Hopefully somebody just returned it because it was too expensive. Hopefully that's the case. Okay. So that looks good. Um, the only thing else I want to do is install the AIO backplate and whatever system that has to make sure that fits on here. There's definitely a chance that this AIO doesn't even fit on this ITX motherboard and we're gonna have to go with something else. We'll see how that goes. So we wanna move these standoffs to the inside like that. Then we should be able to plop that into that like that. Like so. Okay. We got that part going. Okay. So let's start screwing these down in here. That doesn't feel like it's the right one. This size? This side? Yeah, that's it. There we go. So it's the the skinnier part of these standoffs goes into the back plate. We'll install all four of these real quick if I can get this unstuck. This PC is going everywhere. Dude, the, the only place this PC is going is the moon. This is going to be a nice build, man. This is going to be real nice. This is going to be real nice. It's just going to be stre Th This is going to be one of those builds, man, where like at the end of the stream, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. At the end of the stream, there's going to be like 50 viewers max. We're, we're going to go through some, some trials, some uh, turbulence on this build. This is going to be rough. Not a lot of people are going to stick with us during this entire thing. However, once we turn this system on for the first time in roughly six and a half hours from now, give or take, this is going to look real nice, man. Okay. So I think the rest of this installation is pretty simple. I don't think I need to do anything else. Yeah, everything else is for... Yeah, we don't need to do any of that now. Okay, I think we're good. So next up, let's uh, let's actually... Before we install that MOBO, let's take a look at what our cable management is looking like and everything and pull out some of these cable combs. And we also have to take off these plates where we're going to install the AIO and then we can install the motherboard. Okay, so it looks like these panels just kind of pop off there. They just pop out. So that was way simpler than I thought. Okay. We're getting some progress here. There we go. Okay. So these plates are off. Throw those down there. So now we have that open for our AIO. Dude, this is gonna this is gonna be a painful build, man. This is gonna be real painful. I am not looking forward to this at all. Let's uh let's remove this front panel and get rid of those front fans first. Oh my god, they <clears throat> They, uh, they zip tied these fans in here. So I still don't have a good pair of dikes or wire cutters or whatever you want to call them. I only have needle nose pliers. So we're going to have to do the old, the old twist and pull method. Definitely would be easier with wire cutters. Pulling these Fantex RGB fans through. I'm sure that these fans would be perfectly fine 
But to make this build nice and simple, like I said, I am going to be adding the five pack of up here RGB fans, just so all five of the RGB fans that we have are the same and we don't have to worry about like combining colors and whatnot. So bye bye, Fantex fans. I'm so sorry I can't use you. Now it is time to install our motherboard. So we don't need to install a IO shield integrated into the motherboard, thankfully. So we can slot that in, and these are the, the types of standoff that it doesn't allow the motherboard to move. So that went in there nice and clean. All right, what do I need to do to do this now? Let's uninstall this MOBO before we get anywhere. All right, we'll put our little MOBO over here. Oh, wow, this like, oh, I see. I see. I think I can figure this out. I see it. It's super simple. I don't know about super simple, but we're going to get it. Okay. So this entire plate back here gets removed. Oh, I do. Okay. This might actually be pretty intuitive. Okay. We'll remove this screw as well. This actually might be really intuitive. That just... Okay, it's not intuitive. It's not intuitive. Help. Help. Okay. So we put that like that, and then that. Go okay, I, I'm getting it. Oh, okay, I see. So we just connect. We just put this grill on the other side. Like that. Okay. I'm, does it go like that or like that? No, the other way. Okay, so for this vertical GPU mount, we just put it like that. See that? And then we just install it the opposite way that it was. Oh, okay. That's pretty intuitive. That's a pretty nice system. I like that. I really like that, actually. They definitely put a lot of thought process into that. That was nice, quick, and clean. Okay. There we go. And just like that, we are set up for a vertically mounted GPU. Dude, I like that. That was a good idea, Painful. Okay. All right, let's roll. Dude, that's nice. That's real nice. Let me explain what the issue is now. So if we vertically mount our GPU, we give up our ability to mount a rear exhaust fan. And our current airflow setup is going to be two fans intaking from the front, hitting the radiator, and then the exhaust fans are literally right beside it. So like the air is kind of going to go whoop, 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 in and out. It's going to be in and out real quick. And then there's going to be no exhaust in the back here. So like our GPU is probably going to run a little hot with this setup. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Let's slot this bad boy in. The motherboard's going in, man. We are not going backwards from here on out. Painful, I think that is the first time in the history of Thirsty Thursday that you've agreed with me on the 80-20 rule. I think you're finally getting up to speed with the ZTT way, man. But yeah, we're just going to install probably four screws here. Keep this motherboard nice and secure, and then after that, we'll install the uh, the power supply. Okay, the motherboard is installed. Now let's install this power supply next. Okay, so for the power supply cables, we have a 24 pin, which we need for the motherboard. We have the eight pin for the CPU that we need, and then we have a double eight pin for the GPU, and then we will need SATA power just for the up here RGB fans. So other than that, we'll be good for everything else. Oh, we might need the RGB connector? I'm not sure. We'll tackle that later. Yeah, I think we need the RGB connector. We'll, we'll put these to the side. I think we need those. If you're using a modular power supply and building inside an, AT, or an ITX case like this that's super small, it's almost always going to be better to just buy separate 
cables for your modular power supply as opposed to me buying cable extensions which is going to add a huge mess to the back of this build however the way i operate is do i need this yeah the cpu um i buy my cable extensions ahead of time so i just end up having them and I don't plan too far ahead on these build guides because you got to keep things moving on YouTube. So that's why I didn't go down that route. And it's more expensive. Like cable extensions are way cheaper. So just as a heads up, if you were to copy this build, you can make it way easier on yourself if you just buy separate cables for your modular power supply, no matter what brand you get, instead of the cable extensions like I have. Just as a heads up. I think if I just use the back RGB button, I don't need to plug that in. I'm now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Because I think that's what I did for the Zack lantern I didn't want to deal with IQ at the time. Okay, so going to install the removable backplate for our power supply. Before we try to put it in the case. Like so. Oh, wrong, wrong screw. Now we just feed this wasp nest of cables through the back here. And our power supply goes in just like that with the RGB fan at the bottom. That way we can actually see it. And that actually, now that I think about it, that RGB fan, it may match the blue or purple aesthetic that I decide to go with. But it might also just be white to illuminate the rest of the build. We'll see how it looks. But that could end up just being white. I'm not sure. But, yeah, that's it. So, full ATX size power supply in our ITX case. Definitely has me nervous. <clears throat> Let's feed all of these power supply cables out the back just to get those out of the way. Like so. And then we'll work on the connectors for the case itself before we work on the power supply cases, the power supply connectors. So let us try to connect all of the case connectors from this case. So like the HD audio, the USB 3.0, yada, yada. But before we do that, I got to take another quick bathroom break, guys. I apologize. First up. Just going to be installing the USB 3.0 connector without twisting it too badly. Connect that like so. All right. What else do we have here? HD audio. Yeah, HD audio. Where's the HD audio connector on this bad boy? Uh, oh, at the bottom. Cool. So, Fantex didn't do a great job of routing these cables where they should go. Like, a lot of times they'll put the HD audio connector, like, they'll route it towards the bottom already. Um, they didn't really do that with this case. They routed it all over the place. Not a big deal, but something to be aware of. Okay. So, our HD audio cable I don't know if you can see that that is going to go in like so and that is definitely going to get in the way of our GPU okay what's up Pantera how you doing man I didn't know you were hanging out in the chat what's up dude what else do we have we have to have more than that what else we got to have like some USB. Yeah, we got some USB-C action over here. We got to do that. Do we not have USB 2.0? I guess not. No USB 2.0. HD audio, USB-C. And we need like the case connectors wherever they're at. All right. So it looks like the USB-C connector is right below the USB 2.0 or 3.0 connector. So going to install it 
without getting it all tangled here. Like so. The other way. All right, now that the USB-C connectors are installed. So that's USB 3, and that's the USB-C connector right below it. Uh, so it looks like the only case connector on here is the power switch. Does that make sense? Yeah. The only thing we need on here is power. There's no reset button. I only see a power switch on here, which I don't think I've ever seen in a case before. Only come with one power switch? But that's how it is, man. Okay. That works for me. I'm definitely inclined to. I need them, though. So I'm, I'm probably just going to buy them. Oh, and great. The cables aren't labeled for power on the motherboard. So I'm going to have to look that up real quick. It's the bottom two on the right-hand side. Okay. Got it. Now that's plugged in. Okay. So now we have a uh, what some might call consider painful part of this no pun intended to painful but we got to do some cable extensions now that's not going to be fun this is a lot of cables how do we want to do this we want to use black cable combs don't we and we want to do them custom custom this is dude, this is gonna be so painful <laughs> All right, let's plug these in a while. We'll plug it. This is going to be so bad. I can't believe I'm doing this. This is so obnoxious for an ITX build. Okay, the motherboard's plugged in. We got our CPU cables right here. Like so. This is going to be so bad. <laughs> and then we have our two 8 pins for the GPU. This is, this is going to be so obnoxious. Wait, is it even worth it? Wait, wait, wait. Serious question. Is it worth it to do the custom cable extension or cable comb idea with a vertically mounted GPU? That's a serious question, actually. Are you even going to, like, reap the benefits of seeing it? So the GPU is going to be vertically mounted like this. And then the cables are just going to be like this. I don't think it's worth it. It is painful's fault. All right, let's cable comb the CPU first. How is this going to look? This is going to be top like this. We really only need one or two. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, who haven't seen a build like this before, this happens on every single live stream. These formula mod, formula mod cables come pre-cable combed with these clear... Sorry, that's not focused. With these clear cable combs, and it's actually really nice if you want that. However, with the aesthetic that I'm going for, this is supposed to be like a black and gunmetal type of build. So I'm going to install my own black cable combs on here and then simply slide the cable combs that came pre-installed towards the bottom, and then we won't see them. And that is only because the black ones look a little bit better so that is it for the CPU and then for the 24 pin I'm just going to make sure that that clips that way so we definitely want to be on team show cable combs this time so we are going to take two of these black cable combs on this side of it and try to install these combs hopefully quickly because these suck these suck bad Pantera says I'm here we are slowly losing viewers oh, that's what happens man that's what I'm saying I think I think this is good this is a really long build man I think after I think when this build is done we're gonna be at 50 viewers that would be my guess this is a really long and complex build so people get bored. They got stuff to do. It's late. I start on the East Coast. So people on the East Coast, it's already 10 p.m. And there's no end in sight. It's just what happens, man. But just know if you stay for the whole thing, 
you're a true baller. Okay, so now we have to figure out what to do with... Okay, so now this might be a problem. I only have one more 24 pin. But that might actually be enough. Yeah, I think that's going to be enough. Because it doesn't really matter. So, with our GPU, we have a 6-pin uh, and an 8-pin. And we want to combine that into one solid cable comb. And that's vertically mounted. So, this is such a pain in the ass. So, that's going to plug in like that. And that's going to plug in like that. And then we want it to be just like vertical, like this straight now here's my question for you painful this is actually a serious question would you oh wow this is a really serious question i painful i need your attention man would you leave because there's a gap because it's a six pin and an eight pin would you leave a gap in the cable comb or would you not leave a gap and they kind of squeeze together does that make sense does that question make sense should I include this gap and account for one extra cable comb hole? That's actually a pretty good question. I've never done that before. What do you think, ma'am? And that's just going to go across here. I'm thinking I do include an extra one. Because then they stay even. Yeah, this is what it's going to look like. Just like this. Yeah, just like that. I think I do want to keep this gap. And see how, see how that looks clean? That is with the gap. So I need eight holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to cut it off right there. Okay. And because I don't have good wire cutters, <coughs> this isn't going to be the cleanest cut out there, but it's better than no cut. Oh, I lost my spot already. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we want to cut it right there. Yep. And once again, guys, this is just an extra aesthetic option that you definitely do not need to copy with this build guide. But now we have successfully cut our own eight pin connector one two three four five six seven eight okay and then we could probably file this down just a tad bit more there we go now that's clean okay so there we go we got that let's just install this cable extension now that way we know what it looks like with the gap and then hopefully it looks fine with just one. Yeah, that looks cleaner. That'll look much cleaner. Just like that. Have a nice little gap there. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, we'll keep it like that. All right, there we go. Put a uh, GPU away. Okay, now where are we at? All right, motherboard cable, 24 pin, coming out hot. I'll plug that in. This is going to look nice, man. It's going to look real nice. Okay, just like that. Let me uh, organize these cable extensions just a little bit. Just a little bit. We are not cable managing anytime soon. If, if, if ever, but still. Okay, so we got that gray cable coming out. That's going to look real nice there. We're, we are seriously not running into this issue right now, are we? Can I really not get this 8-pin connector here with the power supply like that? Are you serious? No way. Fantex wouldn't do that to us, would they? No. Are you serious? Can I really not fit an 8-pin connector down here? No way. They're not that dumb, are they? No way. No way. Are you... What the... F Got it. That was close, Fantex. You almost had me flipping out there. If I wouldn't have been able to install that, oh, that would have pissed me off. Woo! Woo! That would have pissed me off, man. That is directly on the case manufacturer. 
if that happened. These ATX power supplies, they're good, man. That would be directly on the case itself, but we're good. Okay. All right, so that's plugged in. We don't need to do anything with the GPU cables, although I don't know where the GPU cables are going to come from, actually. Where are the GPU cables going to come from? Probably from right here in the center. It's kind of a weird spot, but for a vertically mounted GPU, I think that that's where they're coming from. Yeah, that's just going to come up and up and over like that. That should be enough height. I think they got to come out from right there, man. I think that'll look... Oh, it's, it's going to be pretty far down. Hold on. Yeah, you might be right. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Never mind. That was dumb. The graphics card is going to be... It's really long. So the cables are going to come out all the way over here. Yeah, that's not a good spot. What was I thinking? Not there. No, not there. Not there. Not there. You guys are right. You guys are right. No, that was dumb. I forgot how long that GPU is. It's going to have to come out from down here. Yeah, that whole, it didn't fit through that one. Okay. Well, that'll hopefully make the cable run longer. That way, it's less that we have to fit. Less that we have to hide. Less cables that we have to hide. The longer the cable run actually is. So that that's fine. This is stressful, man. Okay. Now they're out all the way over here. That looks good. Dude, that, that gray is looking real nice with that black color. That looks good. I think we put the... I think we put the AIO in the front. I think we put the AIO in the front, tubes up at the top. Yeah, just like that. That's what's going to, oh, you can't see that. This is what it's going to look like right here. AIO in the front, tubes are going to swoop around there. The, uh, the vertically mounted graphics card is going to be right there. I think that's it. And then we'll have the exhaust fans right here. What do you guys think? That look good? Cool. I think that's what we're doing. Let's start to install these fans up at the front. So now that now that these are somewhat installed, now I can put the radiator up here at the front. And it's not nearly as difficult to install the four outer screws because if you didn't do it this way, then you have to balance, like, keeping the fan. I don't know if this makes sense to anybody. You'll only know what I'm talking about if you've done this before. Uh, if you didn't do it this way, then you'd be trying to balance the fan with the radiator at the same time, and it's really annoying. So it's good to, like, just pre-install the, the fans halfway like that, and then that way... You can install this super simple. It, it's way easier. Just trust me on that. If you've never done it before. Put it on the side. No, we're putting it on the front, man. Put it on the front. We'll still have the fans in the front. In the in the side. I think we'll be okay, man. I like this anyway. This is better cooling. The radiator is getting all that fresh air now. And then we'll still have our RGB fans up front here. Like that? I think that'll still look fine. I'm not putting it in the back. Not like I made that decision because of optimal airflow. I don't min-max like that, but it's already in now, man. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It is already in. Okay, we got those RGB fans installed. Let's route them up this way real quick. That way we have room for our side exhaust fans. This is going to be bad. <laughs> this is going to be so bad. The cable management is going to be so bad. Okay. There we go. Now we need to install the side exhaust fans like we talked about earlier. We're going to be using this side panel here to install our exhaust fans, which hopefully fit. Oh, boy. Are you serious? Wait, can I even install these fans with the radiator installed like that? Whew! Getting a little nervous about that. Okay. So we will install these with just regular screws. And this will be our only exhaust fan options. 
for this case because, like we said at the beginning, we don't have an exhaust fan when we vertically mount that GPU. So we will install these two up here fans here, and then we'll be done with our cooling. Other than the AIO. That's what it's looking like, like that. So we have our front fans, and then our exhaust fans. Whew! Dude, are we almost done? Should we do the AIO, or should we cable? Actually, we're almost done. We're realistically almost done. There's not a lot of steps left. <laughs> should we do the AIO or cable management? I'm thinking the AIO, and we'll leave the cable management for last. I'm thinking we do the AIO first. Let's lock in the, the AIO for this, and then we'll be done with the cables. Or, and then we can start on the cables and only focus on that. I think that's the route to take. So, does this just slip onto here? I don't... Dude, it's not slipping on. Drink! What? No, I'm not drinking until we figure this out. Oh, it goes like that. I'm not drinking until we figure this out, our danger. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We have to take off that magnetic piece first. We got this for the PWM, which we can deal with later. Let's, uh, we're just going to use the stock thermal paste that's already pre-installed on here. And then I got to get my cable or my, uh, the nuts for, for this mount real quick. And then we are just going to plop this in like that. And then that's going to go over top of it like that. Is that on there? Yeah, that's on there. <laughs> the thermal paste applied, that's on there. Okay. Just going to hand tighten these. Damn, this is starting to look sick, man. I'm starting to see the, the gray and black color scheme come together. This is coming along. So no thermal paste? No, the, the AIO came with pre-installed thermal paste. I'm just using that. Uh, most AIOs these days come with thermal paste pre-installed. Feel free to use that, man. Yeah. Don't worry about min-maxing an extra degree cooler by using your favorite thermal paste. I mean, if you want to, feel free to do that too. But if an AIO comes with pre-installed thermal paste, I personally almost always use it. All right. So we're just going to tighten this down, cross star pattern to try to distribute the weight evenly so it doesn't become unbalanced there we go so now that that's installed we do have this pwm connector we have to deal with but first i'm going to apply this what i think is just magnetic that dude that is looking clean look at that oh my god that's looking clean wow yeah that's just magnetic on there so now we have this rgb cable from Fantex that we have to deal with, and then this PWM cable. That's looking good, okay. So we'll continue with that. It's like a tiny four pin instead of a normal sized four pin. So you plug this into the motherboard and then you plug in your four pin PWM fam to that. And that's what we need to do for the PWM connector of our AIO. Because we definitely want that to be PWM. So we have that into the adapter. And then we're just going to plug that into the motherboard. I can't see system fan, system fan, system fan. There is a full-size PWM over there. So I guess we could just use that. So we'll just use that for that one. There's only one full-size PWM fan. So I'm actually gonna reroute this through the back of the case just because we have enough slack and that way we can hide this cable. And I don't know if my finger dexterity is on point, but I'm gonna try to plug it into this full-size PWM cable right here. Painful says there's a full-size PWM connector in the top left. I got you, man, I got you, man. I appreciate it though. Yeah, that's what exactly what I'm gonna try to do. Plug it in that full-size one. I might need to use the needle nose pliers to get in there because with see you you guys can see how tight this is already. 
I might be able to get it. It's definitely difficult. We do not have a lot of room back here. Oh, I almost had it. Oh, did I get it? I got it. Okay, now we have this ridiculous mess of cables that we somehow have to... Dude, this is not going to be fun. Everything is plugged in but the graphics card. And we got to deal with all... Look, look, look at this. Dude, this is so many cables back here. I'm starting to panic. I'm starting to panic. Oh, God. This is... Oh... All right, next up is just cable management. We're going to do our best here, man. I... Fantex does have... Oh, this is not good. Fantex does have a cable management slot up here, as you can see. It's not big. It's not enough. We're going to have to get creative here. This is not good. This is not good at all. <laughs> Let's install the GPU first. And then that way we know exactly how much cable we have to work with. You think that's a good idea? I think so. Let's install that GPU. And we don't have the PCIe riser cable anyway. Um, but I, I want to know how much cable I have with those GPU cables left, the extensions. So let's do that. And then that way the build is like pretty much 100% in place in the front. And then that way we can... Oh, man, this is going to be rough. So I've literally never done this before. I've never installed the GPU before cable managing the rest of the build. But I think at a time of need, that's what the build's going to look like right there. And that actually looks pretty solid. Um, but this is a time of need, man. I need to know exactly how much cable we have to manage here. And the cable extensions with the GPU power cables are definitely going to be part of the problem. So I want to install the GPU first. That way we plug in the extensions and I know exactly how much I need to cable manage in the back. But either way, this is going to be really, really tough. Okay. So here we got this little contraption. Wait, how did that happen? Oh, there we go. Oh my god. What was I thinking? Okay. There we go. Oh, nope. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that actually looks pretty good like that. Can you guys see that? There we go. Yeah, see, that actually looks pretty solid. With the AIO tubes right there. Look at that. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty solid. That's looking kind of clean. Oh, this is going to be bad, though. So that's essentially what the build looks like right there. We got the gray Formula Mod cables right here and here. Everything else is black. We're going to have some RGB up at the front and the side. Oh, man. All right, here we go. So this is the mess that we are left with, ladies and gentlemen. It is time to try to cable. We don't even have the AIO, or the, not the AIO, the, uh, we'll leave that to the side. We don't even have the Fantex cables, I'm sorry, the up here cables installed. The, the up here fan hub, we don't even have that installed yet. So this is for, this. these cables here are still for the Fantex AIO. So we'll leave that still. And then we need to plug that into this, actually. Because that connects to the case. Okay. So the Fantex RGBs are plugged in. But we need to make sure that we plug in the Fantex SATA power. Which is right here. And then we also need to leave a SATA port open for the up here fan hub. Which hopefully fits right there. I don't know if it's going to, though. Okay, and then we have all these cables. We should have four cables here for the up here fans. We got one, two, three, four. These four right here are all for the up here fans. So the, okay, so this this might not be too bad. 
Oh, man. We're going to have to, like, sit on the, the back of this case. This is going to be brutal. Okay. So this is the RGB fan hub for the up here fans. It is just powered by a single SATA connector. As you can see here, we're just going to plug that in up here. And then I'm probably just going to try and stuff it up here because we have room. Because all of these cables will fit or will reach this. So let's do that. Painful with the 10 bitties slam and side method for the back panel. Yeah, this is going to be bad, man. Okay. Let's plug all these in and see if we can slide and slam. Slide and slam is the name of the game on this one, guys. Let's see if we can make this happen. I'm on the edge of my seat, man. This like this legitimately may not happen. This legitimately legitimately may not fit, which I've never run into. I've never had this issue before. We shall see. But the cool thing, because we installed that GPU first, is everything is done in the front. So as long as we get this back panel to close, we're good. So that's it. That's what the back panel is looking like. Um, let's just see if we have any chance of this closing. Like right now. Oh my god, it's not even close. Hold on. I forgot it goes in like this, right? Oh my god, it's not even close. <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god. There's just there's nowhere to put these cables, man. It's the cable extensions that are doing it. Like the bulkness, the bulkiness of the cable extension connectors is what's doing it. There's just nowhere to put them. Oh, it's in. Oh, nope. I had it for a second. It was on there for a second. Oh, this is so disgusting. I think we could get it to keep there. If I put a screw there, I think we could get it. It's only bending a little bit. All right, let's put a screw here. Let's let's play. Let's play for fun. I think we can do this. I don't know what type of screw that is, though. <laughs> yeah, that looks fine, right? I could sell the build like this. You know, I think, oh, you know, I think if we took this cable extension for the 24 pin and put it under here, very top left, there's nothing in the upper, that, oh yeah, that's kind of crushing, but that's not what's stopping us from closing. Yeah, that was crushing a little bit right there. Like, I'm not even like applying any pressure or a lot of pressure anymore. It's just, it's a bad design. Look, like, th like this is barely any pressure here. Like, you, you can see that it's pretty flat. It's going to pop out. Oh, we might be good. What if I stayed it upright? Oh, it's in, baby. Oh, can't even see the build. It's all black. <laughs> Just get blue right there. Oh, okay. We actually might have a functional build here. Is that it? Is that, is this build done? Oh, wow. That's actually looking kind of clutch. Look at that. You can see the under. Oh, yeah. The fan is definitely hitting something. We're going to have to fix that. <laughs> oh, that is good. That's it, man. I wish I could show you the camera of like the hero shot when you shoot from underneath. the. That's it, man. Dude, that looks nice. That is really good. I think we're done. Blue, black, we got the cable extensions here that could use a little bit of loving. But, like, other than that, dude, that looks nice right there. Okay, I'm okay with that, man. I'm going to wrap this up, at least the, the, the build part of the video. Uh, oh, wow, that cable extension needs a little fixing. Um, if you guys were just staying for the build guide, we done. That looks solid, man. That actually looks really good. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it. This is a $1,200 to $1,300 ITX gaming PC. I wouldn't really copy this one. It didn't go too badly, but uh, definitely definitely tough. If you're going to copy this build, please make sure that this isn't your first gaming PC. But yeah, pretty, uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun build. Only took four hours. Not too bad, man. What do you guys think?